So this is a brief summary of the transcription process. Um, not meant to replace the lecture, but just to kind of recap some of the key things that we talked about. Um, so D transcription is taking a double-stranded DNA molecule and using one of those strands as a template to make an RNA molecule, a messenger RNA molecule, which will then go on to the translation process. So in the diagram you can see on the very left, we've got the eukaryotic model this time of DNA. Uh, so this is a, this box represents a double-stranded uh, DNA molecule. And you can see that it's been color coded with a number of areas. So first of all, we have the RNA coding sequence. So this is the piece that will ultimately become our messenger RNA. Um, um, we have in here um, some introns and exons, which you can follow down the lines, lines here. We have the dark green box, which are a series of promoters. And we also have some blue areas, which are the five prime and the three prime untranslated regions. So um, all of these elements here are part of the gene. They are all the gene, but only the light green elements are the bits which will be uh, translated into um, messenger RNA, then transcribed into protein. However, all of the other parts are important in the process. So first of all, the promoters. So we talked about several promoters in um, the transcription process. In um, prokaryotes, there, there, there are two areas, two promoters we, we talked about, which were the minus 35 TTGACA box and the minus 10 Pribnow box. And in eukaryotes, we talked about two different promoters, which, which were the, um, uh, the the core promoter at minus 30, the Tata box, TAT brackets, AAA box at minus 30, uh, and some of the proximal promoters such as the CAT box, CAAT box at minus 75, and the GC repeat box at minus 90. And these promoters ha have a key role in enabling the transcription process to begin. Um, in identifying the correct start point for the RNA coding sequence. Uh, as we see uh, in the transcription and translation process, we need to be, uh, there's lots of measures to make sure we get these start points exactly correct because of the implications this will ultimately have on protein structure of incorrect. So we talked about the role of these promoters in the initiation process. So on the top left here, there's just an extract of the, um, how the promoter sequences works in um, prokaryotes. Uh, here it's just RNA polymerase and how the subunits of RNA polymerase interact with those promoter sequences, particularly the Pribnow box to form initially a closed, then an open complex, which enables RNA polymerase to undergo the, the transcription of messenger RNA molecule at exactly the right place. In eukaryotes and the extract of the diagram here, obviously you need to refer to the actual slides to see the full detail. We talked about the process in eukaryotes, which is more complicated in the sense there's a number of regulatory factors. So the main um, uh, RNA polymerase that makes messenger RNA in eukaryotes is RNA polymerase 2. Um, and there's all these transcription factors. Uh, you can probably just about make out on the side tran TF2D, so transcription factor for RNA polymerase 2, and D is the, just the, the notation um, to resemble which factor it is. And we described how these different factors interact to enable RNA polymerase 2 to anchor at the correct point. So we talked a lot about these promoter regions and how they start the process. The actual elongation process is very similar to the elongation process in DNA replication. And once again, there was a slide in the talk that described this process. Obviously this time the DNTPs have a uh, uracil uh, in their group, as opposed to thymine. Um, we, we also talked about what happens at the end. So how we stop this process. 
Um, and in prokaryotes, we talked about rho independent and dependent termination, how either using you know, a hairpin loop structure or a rho protein to stop their transcription process. In eukaryotes only, we have some additional uh, factors. So the five prime translate five prime untranslated reason um, contains a cap, which is uh, protection against five prime exonuclease activity. And as we'll see later on, very important in the translation process because it contains something called the shine dalgano sequence. We also have here the three prime untranslated region, which contains the polyadenylated tail. Um, and protects against three prime exonuclease activity and is also important in uh, um, navigating um, the messenger RNA to the, the correct part of the cell where translation can take place. And we described both of these, what their molecular structure looks like and their functions on individual slides. In, in this lecture, we didn't talk about introns. Um, and how they're removed. But this happened in the gene structure lecture, but this is where this would take part in this place. Once again, this is eukaryotes only. Um, um, just a note that introns are shown here in the RNA coding sequence, but they can happen in the promoter regions and in the untranslated regions as well. We call this the pre-messenger RNA. Uh, and once uh, the introns have been removed, splicing, we've got caps and tails, um, this is called messenger RNA or sometimes called mature messenger RNA. Uh, now it's ready to undergo the translation process. And in the case of eukaryotes, that means leaving the nucleus and heading to the ribosomes. Obviously, in prokaryotes, it's different. The two processes are effectively coupled or joined together. So this is just an overview of the process. And obviously, you need to dip into the individual slides that look at those components in more detail. Hope the process is useful.